brother Eric Garner. On his way to the grocery store, Eric Garner had no loose cigarettes to sell to those who lacked the funds to invest in a $13 pack of smokes. But even though Garner, a big black affable guy, had just saved the idle posse of plain clothes cops, the trouble of breaking up a fight, those same cops decided on the spot to arrest him anyway on some obscure aspect of their mission to interdict the sale of untaxed cigarettes to indig indigent tobacco addicts. Guilt or no guilt, Eric Garner would fulfill the Staten Island cop quota in or out of the moment. Garner was known to those local cops, and they were known to Garner. Here they go again. His denial did not prevent his arrest. For a man going to the store for his wife and kids, a family man of love and peace, overweight, diabetic, with heart troubles and another due process on tap, Garner balks and then just as quickly agrees to cooperate with being de de detained rather than, than blowing his top over an in, in, <laughs> inveterable, in, 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 an inveterable situation. But the shortest and thinnest of the cops wearing a New York Yankees cap creeps up behind Garner and has to and has to leap as again uh, to gain an arm around his neck. His arm bent at elbow is grasped by his other hand making a ligature beyond Garner's chin. A video beholds the illegal chokehold. As with the other four cops, Garner is taken down. They are seeking to handcuff him behind his back as if he had been caught in the commission of some crime. Garner says, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and then 10 more times of distinct repetition, having only those few breaths left before his death. Had Garner perhaps turned and grabbed that little leaping cop before he could attempt that illegal chokehold, Garner might be alive today had he slammed down as many of those criminal cops as possible and fought them like a father protecting his family. This is called Sandra Bland. Oh, oh, yeah. DOA before justice. DOA before justice. Texas transportation, Texas traffic laws concerning motorists yielding to emergency vehicles. When you, are, when you see an emergency, vehicle with red lights flashing and a warning siren, you should immediately move all, as near as possible to the right curb or edge of the road to create the clear path of the emergency vehicle to pass on the left. A lovely 28-year-old young woman of African-American descent driving home, driving alone on a desolate plain road leading into, in, the deep, in the deep south, Texas, USA. The flashing lights of an emergency vehicle, a police car comes up fast behind her. She pulls over at once and discovers a police vehicle with lights flashing is following her to the side of the road. And some traffic cop official with a Texas Rangers Stetson badge and gun comes out from the squad car and stands at her driver's side window. There are, they are alone on some desolate old Paris road deep in the old south. She is attractive, sassy, and speaks of her constitutional rights. But when she refuses to put out her cigarette while seated in her car, his official, this official will eventually order her out of her car at the point of a gun and force her to, to the ground, her hands behind her back, and lock together her hands with cuffs tight as can be, pain that causes her to cry out, complaints that are ignored. Attractive, sassy, and cussing, she, <laughs> she, 
Uh, she calls him out of his name. To her, he is the motherfucker. And to him, she is the potential mother who will die. For, her fam for a failure to signal, citizen Sandra Bland was arrested. Three days later, she was DOA before justice. Quote, it is said she was found hanging from a cell partition with a long plastic bag tied around her head. The, finger that, the fingers that shaped the ligature blind, bind with knowledge of the, of the noose. The fingers that shaped the ligature bind with knowledge of the noose. Uh, an hour before, an old black trusty woman said she saw Sandra Bland at 8 a.m. in her cell through the peak hole and that she requested that a 9 a.m. telephone call be given her. She was told that that would be possible an hour later. They seemed to stress their agreement as if that was some kind of understanding that she was alive at 8 a.m and continuous, continuously up until around 9 a.m. when Sandra Bland was discovered deceased. She could have been dead for three days. There was a possibility that the entire telephone appointment was simply to reinforce the trustee, none of, none of whom seemed to have any names, play acting concerning whether Sandra Bland was alive or not. No one except the trustee could hear her voice while Bland was inside of the cell. And that furthermore, therefore, the police's autopsy never questioned the time of death. And that the private autopsy the family had done was not made available to the public, at least according to the record. There was also a camera inside of Sandra Bland's cell that was strangely not working. One would think they would provide her with a cell that had a functioning camera, camera recording what had gone on. Sandra Bland's last recorded voice was from her iPhone tape recording during her violent arrest at the hands of the policeman who was later fired for making a false arrest and banned from ever being a law enforcement officer again in any jurisdiction. The reliance on the trustees' words were quite surprising. It was heard said that their testimony was very central to the verdict the understanding that Bland had met no harm, yet it was also understood that their testimony had no standing since they were not credit, credible as witnesses due to their criminal status. Statuses. It would have been good to hear what, what Bland, uh, Bland had to say about her situation three days after her captivity in a cell that had no camera that recorded her treatment. Whatever treatment she was afforded is an unknown, it is clear the police would never testify against one another, and it is also clear that her post-death examination and autopsy never included use of a rape kit or an independent autopsy. What's the time? <laughs> okay. Not only was Sandra Bland falsely arrested, but her three-day captivity was no, has no documentation outside of the police authorities' word. There was a film of, of the outside of Bland's cell and even footage of the trustees checking the cell through the peephole at 9 a.m. when she is discovered hanging. That was immediately called a suicide. No one else was shown, in, shown to look through the peephole before that time to verify she was alive. It was the voices, the vo words of the trustees and the police that were the only counsels in that judgment. It was a local government employee who decide, declared Sandra Bland dead. And that was by suicide. And that was that. The fingers that shape, the ligature bind with knowledge of the noose. The fingers that shape, the ligature bind with knowledge of the noose. The figure who ties the ligature, amateur successful on first try, suicide, the police say. Sandra Bland, citizen corpse of no habeas or corpus, here before the law there is nobody, nobody here before the law, only the trustees, those ladies in uniform who know the truth of the plastic bag, the truth of the death of citizen Sandra Bland, Bland DOA, before justice. That will 
carry them to their graves. another yard and quick I was looking for anything but they were all occupied by men of all races but still men and all in the same well-worn uniform as that man who had wanted my goal and who had claimed the world's copper as his own I knew out of experience to avoid them I'd initially been attracted by the flickering light issuing from one of the yards I, in my naivety, had assumed to be the light of a television set, a then new phenomenon of technology said to be capable of changing how people viewed one another and curious about this, I stopped to have myself a look-see, though I did make sure I stayed carefully hidden. A man was saying, do you know why this place is so great? Another said, no, why? The man said, human beings hang out here. The other laughed. He said, we can have some fun. 
I heard a laugh track, some snickers. They were standing around an oil can, which they appeared to be warming themselves, curious as it was not a cold night. I noticed they were carrying guns as well as sticks. In fact, they were armed to the teeth, daggers everywhere, bandoliers slung from their shoulders for automatic fire. What happened next was chilling enough. Some Indians appeared, Plains Indians, Assiniboine, I believe, and pre-Spanish contact as they'd no horses, just dogs to which they'd attached drag sleds for their wiki-ups and their cooking pots and whatever, nomads with women and children, the men who had spoken first, who said, do you know why this place is so great? Now said, ready boys. The other men laughed and said they were ready. They shouldered their weapons. The man said, fire. They shot the Indians dead, men, women, and children. Then they advanced on the dead Indians. People, really, scalped them all and made a movie out of it. There was real blood, lots of it, lots and lots. I realized being pre-Spanish contact Indians was a misnomer, uh, but what else was I to call them? I didn't know their names. Some Chinese came on and they shot them. Some Japanese came on and they shot them. Some Russians came on and they shot them. Some Koreans came on and they shot them. Some Vietnamese came on and they shot them. Some Cambodians came on and they shot them. Some Loatians came on and they shot them. Some Serbs came on and they shot them. Some Croats came on and they shot them. Some Cubans came on and they shot them. Some Wales came on and they shot them. Some Afghanis came on and they shot them. Some Jews came on and they shot them. Some Germans came on and they shot them. Some Iraqis came on and they shot them. Some Kurds came on and they shot them. Some Syrians came on and they shot them. Some Indian Egyptians came on and they shot them. Some rabbits came on and they shot them. Some birds came on and they shot them. Turkeys, some bears came on and they shot them. Some deer came on and they shot them. Some Mexicans came on and they shot them at the Alamo. Some Greeks came on and they shot them. Some Hindus came on and they shot them again and again. Some cows came on and they shot them for beef. Some Levitians came on and they shot them. Some Grenadians came on and they shot them. Some Panamanians came on and they shot them. Some Romanians came on and they shot them. Some elk came on and they shot them. Some chamois came on and they shot them for sport. Some elephants came on and they shot them for ivory. Lastly, but not leastly, some niggers came on and they shot them laughing. They were cartoons with lots of shooting in them, lots of blood. They shot a huge panorama of the Napoleonic Wars and everybody died. They shot everything and everybody and made a movie out of it. That was John Farris. Getting past the semblance and into the appearance. As an undergrad at the State University of New York at New Pulse, I studied Introduction to Philosophy with Dr. David Applebaum. He was a very tall man, if I remember correctly, and he had a scar that went across his cheek. We were studying Plato's allegory of the cave. He would speak very little and walk around the room slowly and sure-footed. On this day, he said, everyone is hiding. Then he walked to the chalkboard, picked up a piece of chalk, and wrote the word hiding on the board. We sat in the classroom staring at each other and waiting for something to happen.
I raised my hand and said, well, doesn't that mean that everyone in this room is hiding from something? The class ended. In On the Truth and Lie, in the extra moral sense, Nietzsche writes, truths are illusions. We are forgotten our illusions. Therefore, what we are hiding from is the truth of ourselves. Humans tend to get engrossed in the material because these materials represent the illusions that we wish to believe about ourselves. But truth be told, happiness is the only truth. And quite often, like in the cinema, the truth is created through an illusion that we believe into existence. Furthermore, once the bright lights reveal there is nothing more than a facade hiding nothing, can humans know the truth and perhaps the essence of all humanity, love of the moment that is now. This is what free improvisation allows the performer to do. At the heart of free improvisation is the artist living in the moment and responding truthfully and naturally to the present. In the theater, this is sometimes referred to as seeing and hearing. When one is seeing and hearing, one gains the ability to discern between the truth and the illusion or the appearance versus the semblance of an object Based on my understanding of phenomenology, the semblance of an object is its signifier or visual representation. On the other hand, the appearance of the object is the signified or actions that define a person. For example, schools, social clubs, occupations, hobbies that a person might do or have during a lifetime. While one semblance can appear to be very relaxed, their actual lives can be quite structured and vice versa can occur also. Improvisation is a cloak that allows the artist freedom within the structures of art making and society. One artist who embodies this point is Ornette Coleman. He breaks the rules by playing by them. He understands the structure of music and perhaps even uses the ideas of improvisation to reveal one of the truths that music must be organized sound as an illusion. Music can be chaos and it can be random. Free improvisation has both of these qualities. Free improvisational music can be defined as aesthetically pleasing, solely based on the arbitrary opinion of the performer who is also the composer. Coleman's appearance is based on these ideas. However, his semblance is of relaxed, smooth talking, smoking a cigarette man who blows a phosphorescent horn. In addition, through the act of free improvisation, Coleman frees himself from the conformity of pre-existing forms and allows him to move into a formless reality enveloped with music. In closing, free improvisation allows the artist to transcend the limits of their corporal form by creating art in the moment. During this moment, the truth is revealed and there is no hiding illusion in the moment. There is only now and the truth that beauty is formless. Coyote. One. Silhouetted figure in the night. In front, a blaze, wine and spirits, flag upside down and translucent. Light shine bright, linen tattered but not broken or burnt. Two. A coyote on the loose. Where did those bunnies go that night? Screams were heard for miles. A hail of rubber bullets bouncing off bodies, protesting white supremacy, teeth dripping with blood. Three, the president is in a bunker. 
Is this the revolution, Senator Sanders? What have we to do? Like Hitler hid, our president hides. Coyote on the streets. Coyotes take to the streets. Don't loot, regardless. Some of these white, 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 white supremacists plan to shoot. The line. Oatmeal salads of hubris texture. A cold breeze blows, singing low, sweet, a snap, a pop, a crack. It all falls down, tornado soup, kumquat basil salad, ginger for a snack. Every layer of the onion counts. I said goodbye to my housemate today. A buzzsaw in an orchestra, the ontology of a lemon, aesthetics of the heart, fascism on the rise, the threat of nationalism, strange fruit. Steve Delachinsky died today, and then, and then, and then, I went back to where I started. Nothing was there, I was never there. I was here before you, reading this poem. That is a fact. My friend Steve died tonight. No one is here right now to be sad with me. So I put on Moon Safari by Air, 13th Friday, 13 years since the last full moon on Friday the 13th. Who knew TKO, Ginger and Maple, both Steves in the same summer. I dream of Jeannie, the coefficient, not the TV show, the teeth of trees. Can bicycles be friends? Thank you. Everything's been great. Thank you for your help. Bye. The artifact of the tool where Steve Delachinsky's last words I overdosed on Sun Ra. The ting of metal hitting metal. The sound of coal train. Feet scrape the concrete. A woman sniffled eating watermelon and cookies. A helicopter passes. All quiet on the western front. The pier is gone. I saw Eileen last night. Bold to have the scallops. The lid shut. The keys at the table. Sirens sing. A ship with an LCD billboard in the New York Harbor. The f f f f new tour moves in. A leaf drops. Engine rumble. Dry leaf scrapes ground. Plane landing. There's beauty in today. The sun shines on the metal umbrella. Clouds like coconut whipped cream. The seagull lands. Is it raining at the airport? How about on Saturn? Yellow cranes stand tall, seagulls soar, blue and purple mirror sunglasses go by, gray band together like the Arab on the beach, stranger things. This is the language school, an L equal sign, A equal sign, N equal sign, G equal sign, U equal sign, A equal sign, T equal sign, E, poetry, tick tock tock tick. Echo, echo, low G science. This is where I end. This is where I begin. This, this is, is, is not that. Tis, whiz, fizz, sizz, lore, surf, and turf. Sailboat meets fairy quakes. I'm interested in the line. I'm interested in painting with words on the page, in the air, on the stage. Together, passions cross, twisted pod, sing your anthem, roll tips, a breeze from a vine, ivy on a wall, roses in the garden, a new day has come, community access, challenges of life, thrift store of junk, 
weather's feathered delight. Would you cry? Drip drop thunder, rain, rain, rain. Poetry reading equal boxing match filled with ambrosian revelation. An open bar provided drink after drink to Andy. Plus one tequila, plus one beer, plus one whiskey. After Andy was sauced, she approached the stage. She threw some punches. Andy shook. Andy shake. It was rope a dope. It was dope on the rope. Ella sat in the audience at the poetry reading. Swallow this whole. Ella laughed. This is when the woman in the back of the bar began to giggle. Bum rush the stage. Carrie, the organizer of the event, told her to be quiet. The woman said, "Fuck you," and giggled. And Andy finished reading. It was over a whale. Carrie introduced Ella. The woman shouted, "This poetry sucks." Ella began. Small steps, crooked path, yellow light. The drunk woman laughed. Ha 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 ha! Ella approached the woman. The woman kept laughing. Ha 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 ha! Ella said, "Stop it, you bitch!" The woman laughed harder. Bam! Ella punched her. The woman fell to the ground. Poets scatter into the night. There was silence. A bell rang. The reading was over.
videotaping everything over there. I do art. How oh, you doing? Art videos. For? Myself. Just for yourself? Yeah. It's not really against the law, but they don't like people filming the operation of the boat, just the security concerns. Understandable. All right. Like the crew's getting a little scared that you're out here videotaping them. You know? I'm not doing it to them. Well, they are on your tape, I'm sure, or on your camera. All right. When you feel a little weird in their shoes, yes, no. You know, the World Trade Center blew up just down the block. You know, we do have security concerns. I mean, I understand you do art stuff. Maybe, you know, in the future, just maybe try to get the Staten Island Ferry or something else. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
center of the board, eyeing the Indian subcontinent with a gaze like Bonaparte, he considers Kathmandu a high ground, elephant in this way. He likes snow. Leopards never change their spots. Placing his back suddenly against Delhi like a crook, like a rook, he has his nights to save. He has always loved castles. Karachi is a pawn. Carefully studying his maps and his manuals, he says, he knows he's in the independent chest. He has sent his bishops to Karachi. He wants us to know he is a key man. He reminds us there is plenty of yak weather in the Himalayas. He will slow down out of these mountains like lightning, like an avalanche into the first world war of the 21st century. Calming the animals, reading their score, the Secretary of State adds, before you can say Jack Robinson, for your information. At ground zero, in preparation for the president's visit, the looting has become heady stuff. A few watches, rings, scavengers from the Department of Correction, jackals, crows, a curious seagull. The eagle will land soon. The mayor, having barely escaped the implosion of his life, unflapping, unflappable as ever, wants to know who this guy Agni is. Warned the populace to tell all this talk about box cutters. <clears throat> Appro uh, approximate dawn. This day approximates dawn, color of battleships, color of gunmetal, and fighter planes. This day, the 14th of September, has been declared a day of national mourning. 200 miles to the south, the toll of bells from the National Cathedral a low moan of the shofar from the temple. Masked against the stench of the still burning rubble, appearing larger than life itself, surrounded by gulls startled by the overflight of fighters and the intrusion of secret servicemen, the president, characteristically hyperbolic, announces his intent to rid the world of evil. He declares himself king of the hill, a twisted steel, there has been the envy of Babylon. Rocks in hard places. Having knocked out the transmitter atop the northern tower, WKCR has been off the air for days. It would seem Omar bin Laden does not like jazz either. Nobody is playing football. There will be no middleweight championship fight, no baseball. Nobody cares who has no arm unless it is a victim or where a fence is concerned. Who is at that against who knuckleball? Who's curved? Suddenly, everyone is a Yankee. High above the iron crosses decorating the headquarters of the local out law biker club, someone has spread a gigantic flag across the thoroughfare. Even the White House is draped in black. Doom 
in which he has codenamed Alex. He plays golf with the weather. He and off, he has forgotten the rules. Doom is a violent game, like a high school shooting. There are terrorists in it that blow up the twin towers of the World Trade Center. There is a war between Tonto and the Lone Ranger. George is a cute baby. He is bigger than the world, dwarfing both Bay, the Blue Ox, and Paul Bunyan. I am Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. For reasons of national security, George has been cloned. My daughter wakes me up. It was not a pretty picture. All the Georges had weighed wags, big dogs, recast as dragons. All of them kept saying, this will pick you up, like it was a drink. They were lying and lying. It was not a drink, and when it was, it had wormwood in it. The worst thing was not being able to tell where all the bodies had come from. The one bright spot was in a corner of the screen, like the sun, though there was always hope that in the afterlife, somewhere beyond the sun, people would have learned to get along much better without sex, because that was what had been attractive about all those Georges. They were certainly sexy, nicknamed cute baby. Survivors. My painter friend said his sister saw the Reaper, their hands joined like paper dolls. Hell. The task of sorting out all the body parts from the general remains is grim, if not impossible. The collapse of the twin buildings on themselves making the site a clay oven. Rescue workers trained for this know a worst case scenario when they see one. Whatever liquids used to contain the still smoldering fires, adding pockets of steam to the lingering toxic smoke the workers hold their breath against, retreat from, and go back to, like the persistent dulls hovering on the persistent, on the periphery of the rising heat, lowering themselves in on their white wings whenever possible to grab something and have a ride. Train, caterpillar. given the city 20 whole billion dollars in America. Members of the Board of Elections were told to leave so fast some votes might have gotten lost. Behind the barriers, the mayor appears perennial, like Fiorello. Kabul is so used to bombs, over there they call them rain. Soldiers invading Afghanistan tend to become heroin addicts. There is a strong, strong relationship between morphine and the Khyber Pass. If you're not with us, you're against us. That's because of our pluralistic form of government. The Attorney General sounds like John Wayne. Bring back Elliot Baseball has returned to the free John Wayne is a good person to meditate in these times. The man is close. He is close. Don't let the dog out. Don't let the dog out.
Also schon 